With real world high map data, most solutions with Unity require to use one or more third party tools to modify the source data before you can use it to build your ter terrains. And most solutions don't allow you to easily spread that data across multiple terrains. For some time now, Landscape Builder has supported importing real world or off world data using topography image layers. This is fine if you want to get data from sources such as terrain.party or or the Lunar Orbital Laser Alignment Program. But what if you want to just get some free data from the internet and drop it into your scene? You don't want to subscribe to any service and you don't want to have to continually stream data from someone else's service, server. Landscape Builder now natively supports GeoTIFF real-world height map files. Download a file, import it into a scene, and you're done. Let me show you how. Let's go to opentopography.org and let's have a look at their data. Uh, let's look at their raster data sets. We can use either public high resolution airborne 1 meter data or, we, or 30 meter satellite data if we need coverage for most of the world. Let's go to the data, let's go to the global data set. Uh, let's just choose maybe. Um, space Shuttle 30 meter data. So scroll down, you can see uh, world map. Let's just select a region, maybe the west coast of the US somewhere. Okay. Maybe. Up a little. Now you want to make your data fairly square. You can either type in the values directly if you know where you want to go. Or you can just zoom in, whatever. Uh, so if I scroll down, you'll see um, it supports GeoTIFF data. And I can just fill in my um, a description or a title for my job and put in my email address. And Open Topography will notify me via email when the data is ready to download. Now, if you choose a small data set, which I'd suggest you start with, uh, it'll take like less than a minute or maybe a couple of minutes at the most. Okay, so I have my, uh, I've downloaded a couple of data sets earlier. It took a couple of minutes. Um, I'm sure you don't want to wait for that in the demo. And it, for, TIFF, for GeoTIFF data, we can, uh, we now sub natively support 8-bit, or 16-bit or 32-bit data. Now, the site creates a zip tar file, which you can unzip using your favorite compression software on Windows. I'm just, I've just used um, 7-zip. I've created a new scene and I've saved this as a GeoTIFF tutorial. In my, so in this scene, um, I've uh, obviously, I'm using Unity 2017. Um, this is dot one, but you can use dot two or dot three or whatever. Uh, you can also use Unity 5.5 or 5.6 if you have an older version. And I'm just going to create a new landscape. Um, give it a name. I'm just going to use 2000 by 2000 just for simplicity. But you can you can create whatever size landscape you want. Um, and uh, you can you have one terrain or multiple terrains, doesn't matter. Let's just go and generate that. Uh, and you can see we can import um, existing terrain data. So if I had a, a project I created outside the landscape builder, I could import that. Um, or I could import raw, t um, raw height map data files, um, which obviously Unity supports as well. And um, and I can, uh, I have this option now for GeoTIFF. So let's just go and find my data that we downloaded. So the Death Valley data set. 
Okay, and immediately you'll see the min and max heights uh, set. What the data has. Uh, ranges from 138 metres to 2,337 for this area. Uh, and there's a bit of a problem that my height of my landscape or my terrains is not correct. Uh, or doesn't really match the data. Now I can ignore this warning, but I'm just going to get Landscape Builder just to fix it up for me, right? And generate my landscape. Okay. So here we have, uh, we have generated some my landscape, oh, it's a bit white. Let's just go and add a bit of texture so we can see what's going on. Okay, maybe deserts. Um, okay. Let's just try that. Okay, so now it, it kind of might look a little bit flat here in my case. So I can just kind of modify that with the height scale a bit to give it a bit more height. Maybe a little bit more. I can play around with that. Okay, so uh, because we support other data types with TIFF, uh, let's just go and let's just um, maybe delete this layer and let's import some other data. Maybe some floating point data to give you a bit of an idea of what that looks like. I'm just going to use maybe something like Elmo River. Um, again, I'm just going to adjust my um, adjust my uh, terrain height, and let's go and generate that. Oh, and you can see it's like really flat, and that's because we're using floating point data. So I'm just going to normalize this data. Okay, that's a bit better. Let's uh, maybe. Maybe change my presets and I'll just delete a few of these. What have we got here? Well, mm, maybe I'm just going to use fills. Okay, so you can see here we've um, got a bit of a Let's have a quick look at that. Okay, maybe I'll we'll try and put a bit of sand down by the river. Let's do duplicate that one. Okay, so a bit of sand in here. Uh, let's just do height and inclination quickly. And they're between maybe 0 and 100 metres will do. Let's just keep the inclination really short uh, and maybe increase the strength a bit. Here we go. Okay, so there we go. We have a really quick scene importing um, some more data. Uh, so you can see it's very fast to just grab some files off the internet, real height world data, quickly just texture it and give you a quick view of what it might look like. And hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of how fast it is to import real world height map data directly into your scene. Thanks for watching.